Hi, I'm Matt Frizzell, and I'm a full-time minister in the Community of Christ. I also have a PhD in theology and ethics, but I don't tell that to impress you. I'm actually probably a lot like you. I'm a wanderer, I'm a wonderer, and I'm a questioner. Matter of fact, I think I went into theology and ethics because I had a bunch of questions. And if there's one thing I learned along the way, having the right questions can be life-giving. In this IGTV series, I want to invite you on a journey. We're going to look at who Jesus is today, not only who he was in his own context, but what he means today in light of modern problems like poverty and disease and displaced persons, abuse, and the environment. We're going to be using the Community of Christ Doctrine and Covenants, section 163, paragraphs 4a and b as our guide. And on, no matter what you think about theology or religion or scripture, I think this is going to be an important journey that we take together. Because poverty, abuse, disease, displaced persons, and the environment, they affect lives across the globe. Indirectly or directly, they affect you and me. Each one of these videos is going to coincide with an article in the Community of Christ magazine called The Herald. We're calling the series Toward the Peaceful One. I wrote the first article. It's called Jesus, the Peaceful One. And as I wrote the article, I had this one question in my mind the entire time. Who is Jesus in Community of Christ perspective? What is unique about a Community of Christ perspective on Jesus? I knew the answer right away. Doctrine and Covenant section 163 describes Jesus this way. Jesus is the embodiment of God's shalom. That not only put it in perspective from a community of Christ point of view, but it also clearly identified Jesus from a biblical perspective. The words embodiment and God's shalom are as old as religion itself. And if these words are true and, and accurate, we have a lot to unpack because it puts Jesus in the middle of, div of a divine and cosmic story. He's a whole lot more than a personal savior. He's a whole lot more than just a sacrifice for sins. Jesus is the fulfillment of humanity. He's the fulfillment of creation. Jesus is the reign of God. He's the messenger and message of the kingdom. As the embodiment of God's shalom, wherever Jesus is, the just and merciful reign of God, the peace of God, that's where Jesus is also. You see, if you want to understand who Jesus is, you're probably going to have to let go of a lot of the popular religious ideas that we hear on social media or even through AM radio. You might even have to let go of some of the things that you were taught growing up. And if you want to understand who Jesus was in the minds and the lives of the people that he was around in the time when he was alive, you might have to get inside of the thoughts and the feelings and the dreams and the struggles of the people who were convinced he was the chosen one, the ones who called him Christ and Messiah. You see, the word Christ in Greek, just like the word Messiah in Hebrew, mean the same thing. They mean anointed or chosen one. And it cracks me up sometimes with all the negativity and the criticism of religion you hear these days. Our pop culture, the very world that surrounds us all the time and its values, they remind us of how important these ancient questions still are to us. All you got to do is go to the movies and watch Harry Potter or Luke Skywalker or think about Katniss Everdeen and the Hunger Games. They were the chosen ones. We seem to be obsessed with the same questions the ancients were. Who is the chosen one? What can they do? What are they going to do? Can they set the world straight? Can they set it right back up again on the right side up? Can they set my world up right side up again? So if that's who Jesus is, what does it mean when he says 
follow me. It's another one of those life-giving questions. How do you follow the embodiment of God's shalom? Well, that's exactly what I think this IGTV series and the Herald, art, the Herald articles <laughs> are going to be about. When I think of what it means to follow Jesus, I think of examples. I think of an invitation, a way of life that just seems so counter to every message that seems to be coming across the screens that I look at. Or the news reports. Or the values of the dominant or surrounding society. Jesus, Jesus' teachings in his life seem to present a counterintuitive, a countercultural way of life. A way of life where power wasn't being the best. You didn't have to have everything you wanted. You didn't have to dominate to win. Jesus on the cross is clearly a, it's not a winner take all kind of politics. In Jesus, we see a different kind of invitation. His life and teachings point to a source of life, a fulfillment of life, which is what God's shalom is all about. That's beyond winning beyond human or traditional notions of power. It's beyond control and having. And that's the kind of stuff that keeps giving me questions, life-giving questions. The ones that keep me going every day. Just like the writers of The Hunger Games and of Star Wars and of Harry Potter are modern writers that talk write about the chosen ones. Imagine the chosen one the same way the biblical writers did. As important as beliefs and concepts and ideas are, the chosen one is a person. That's what embodiment is all about. Theologians call it incarnation. Jesus was the incarnation of God's shalom. We need someone to relate to. We need someone to reflect on that can show us the, fulfill, the fulfillment of our own potential, of our own possibilities. And that's who Jesus is, too. He's the enfleshment. He's the God's shalom come to life. That's a really important concept when you think about who Jesus is. He's more than just a hero. He's more than just a guy with superpowers. Matter of fact, his superpowers really aren't even his. All those miracles, all those healings, even his resurrection, that was the power of God's show. God is the source of life. Jesus is the presence of God's source of life. The embodiment of God's shalom. I thought this path, this path was a perfect place to introduce this series. It's a wonderful metaphor, maybe overdone, maybe overused. It doesn't matter, it's ancient. We all have to choose our own path. In many ways, we have to answer the question, even if we don't care about it, in a way, who do we say that he is? That's what the community of Christ is trying to answer with this series. Who do we say that he is? It's a question that every seeker, every disciple, even every self-proclaimed atheist in a sense has already made and that we have to make. We all have to determine the meaning of life. We all have to make a decision about what this all means to us. Jesus provides something to something to listen to, something to reflect on, a call that beckons us that we can either rebel against and resist or consider and embrace. It's the kind of stuff communities can be made out of. It's what church is about.
If you have a comment that you want to make about this video, feel free to post it in the comment section below. I also invite you to the Zoom session that will be on Monday, June 1st at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time. We'll be sending out invitations and communicating information about the Zoom link so that you can join that discussion. During those Zoom sessions, you'll be able to talk with the authors of these articles. You'll be able to join small group, part or small group conversations to add your perspective, to voice your point of view, to be part of this collective discernment process about who Jesus is, not only in his own time, but who he means today in light of poverty, abuse, disease, displaced persons, in the environmental crisis. These are the themes that section 163 of the Community of Christ Doctrine and Covenants kind of forces us to wrestle with. If Jesus is the embodiment of God's shalom, then Jesus is the answer or provides a way, a path, if you will, to address those problems.